Hello Internet, welcome. We have so much stuff to do. So let's get started. In a previous stream we finished the string collector and now is the time to actually um, try to conclude the data stream subsystem refactoring that we started. So the first thing I want to do is to teach my stream implementations how to provide context information for the current position that is used will be used in error reporting. In the end we want to have error reports a bit like that that give us uh, the context of the error position within the nested uh, substreams that we are in and so on. And so first we will teach our string implementations to fill out a context structure um, that we will later use to, to generate um, error information like that. So let's get started. I already started with a sketch of the structure containing the context information. And now we must write the interface uh, responsible for filling that. Uh, let's simply call it uh, the context function. So I think it will return an unsent integer that corresponds to the depth that we are at in the context uh, stack because this will be need this will need to be called recursively because the streams themselves don't know at which depth they are they need to call the upstreams um, until finally a stream is reached that does not derive from from a more underlying stream And let's see what do, what will we need to pass. We we will need to pass an array to fill out so let's call it CTX info or whatever or infos. That's an array. Uh, we will also need to tell it how much space there is in this array. Actually, I'm thinking about maybe maybe wrapping everything that we need into a struct because that will make the the passing on of this information much easier in the in the recursion. I think let's let's do that. Let's call it the data stream context query. This will, this will contain a pointer to the infos array. It will also contain a number of allocated uh, infrastructures. It will also contain a pointer 
to the string collector that we that we are using okay that's the most important stuff i think so that will be our signature for now let's see what else we we do need and the idea will be to call this first, so to first do a query with uh, any infos allocated set to zero. So we just get the depth information, then we can decide, usually decide uh, how many infos to allocate. Or maybe we work with a pre-allocated um, array of infos, uh, then we will probably need only a single call. Yeah, that's the idea. And this will be something that that our stream interface supports and this will be removed later so so let's just start with an implementation to get a feeling for how this could look like. Uh, we start with the simplest case that is the array data stream that just works on an in-memory array. So data stream context query The array data stream is always the outermost layer. So uh, the return value is simple. This will be zero. Or will, will it be one? That's the question, how we, des how we design the interface. Probably should be one. And let's start to document that. <clears throat> Returns the number of nested contexts encountered, including the one into the stream on which this function was called. I don't know if that is grammatically correct, but I hope it explains what it does. So about the filling out. <clears throat> As we only need a, a single level, the only thing we need to check is if query has at least has at least one slot for us. We will need to think about, um, yeah, let, let's for now, there will be a, a slight complication later about uh, this kind of check. We'll come to that. So, and now let's simply fill in the, the query. So, get the first element and um, fill it what kind do so we have a start offset that will be zero in this case 
we have an end offset that will just be the length of the of the memory buffer now about the the strings that's that's a good question i mean we could we could just um we could just generate a description here but that will be quite meaningless because it would just say okay it's an array data stream but what we actually want to know is what's the purpose of the stream what is inside this stream and this is something that only the only the code constructing this array data stream knows so the code constructing the stream will, 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 need to, will need to provide a meaningful description. That's, that's not a big problem. I'm just thinking about... I mean, one question is, do we always want to have that? Because maybe in a release build... Because creating this description, of course, will, will take some time. And if we, if we ever have a situation where we create these array data streams in an inner loop, we maybe do not want to spend that, that time. I mean, I, I could see two ways to handle that. One is to, to have a callback that actually only generates the description if we need it or when we need it. Just for trying out things, let's just um, just for trying out strings, let's generate a, a, a dummy title and description. So this is the first time we will uh, use our string collector here. Very simple to use, as it should be. Um, do we just for trying out let's let's create also a description uh, that says just um, in memory stream of so and so many bytes just for trying things out Is that everything that we need to fill out? Oh, we still have the flags. So we have the offset, the flags. Yeah, this will be define an address space. So let's put the first.
we should maybe have a helper function for filling out this structure so we whenever we add something to it we don't forget so So that's the first thing. Um, let's also implement this for one of the nested substreams so we can try out things. Uh, for the seeking subs, oh yeah, we also need to set the function pointer, but maybe let's do it for the seeking substream. F um, and yeah, this will certainly not return one. Actually, I'm not sure I want to pass the status object here because the, the point is everything that gets past the status ob object has the option to fail. And I don't want this context reporting to ever fail. This should be just something that always succeeds. I mean, in the worst case, it can maybe not provide full information, but it should never fail. So I think we will get rid of the status member here. Um, Get rid of this. And now this will certainly need to recurse. Actually, we probably should have a wrapper here that handles the case when we don't have a context function. We will add that later. Context fn is null pointer. Actually, this is with, uh, upstream. So we ask, first we ask the upstream to report. And if we still have space, and, and this will be, this is incomplete. Um, because of something that I will explain later when we have a pre-allocated array. But let's keep it simple. So the seeking substream does not define its own address space. So this will be zero. Start offset will be the start pause. 
um, end offset that's a bit more difficult to how do we get the end offset i think we already have code that that calculates something like this here we calculate the substream length okay that's that's good enough because with that once we have the substream length we can calculate the end pos the end offset <coughs> Yeah, here we will just, <clears throat> yeah, these are dummy strings for now. We, we need to really think about, <coughs> sorry. We need to Sorry, my pollen allergy is wrecking my voice. Yeah, <clears throat> that's it for now. So let's do a test. Uh, we will create ourselves some streams. And then um, we create a seeking substream. In it, we don't have some. So how is this? How does this work? Seeking substream <coughs> S1. The upstream is, and oh yeah, actually we should place it as an at an interesting position and let's say we make it 10 bytes long but let's first uh, let's first seek the the array data stream to position 5 let's say And then we init the seeking substream. Context query. <coughs> so mm, data stream context info infos. Let's for now, yeah, let's. Okay. 
we also need the, <coughs> the string collector. So let's uh, let's make a basic string collector. That will be yeah. That will be a a pre-allocated one. Now let's make this a little bigger. And then let's let's ask our seeking substream currently we don't have the wrapper function, so let's just call the context function. We shouldn't get an error by any of this. Um, we expect the def to be two. Yeah. Let's <clears throat> leave it at that for now. Oh no, let's also, we can immediately check a few things. Actually, let's assert that because if that's wrong, then no, there's no point in checking the rest. So the start offset of level zero should be zero. The end offset <coughs> should be 20. So that's actually size of buff. So start Offset of level one should be four, but let's, no, five. Let's put three so we get an error and we see what's going on. I always like to start my, my tests failing. <clears throat> so I see that they are actually executed. Okay. Let's try that. How many syntax errors have we made? <clears throat> this is so annoying. I mean, the compiler even knows that I meant dot. So, but yeah. That was it. That was the only mistake we made. That's amazing. Oh, I see another problem. Yeah. I already saw it. This one. Okay, we got a fail, but we failed. Oh, we failed really badly. Ah, because no, did we forget to init something? We failed really badly. Why is that? Did we for, we in we did init the string allocator? Should that should be fine? did in it both of our strings, uh, streams. So let's look at that with a oh, nice remedy debugger, new version. Do we have to write executable? Yes.
Why no call stack? Oh, yeah, <laughs> we jumped, we, we tried to execute address zero, that, then it's clear what the mistake is. I forgot to set, I mentioned it, but I forgot to, to set the function pointer. And we, because we don't have the wrapper yet that checks this case, we are trying to execute something at location zero. So array data stream in it must set the context function. What? We're still crashing? Did we rebuild? Yeah. Seriously? Still crashing? Ray data stream context. And this also sets it. That's strange. Let's have another look. Oh, we still have the wrong signature. How does that, how did that get through? Oh, because we do a stupid cast here and the cast, yeah, that's bad. That is, sorry, I'm clumsy today. That is bad. That's the problem with brutally casting function pointers. Yeah, now we get the expected errors. It's five instead of three and 15 instead of 13, which is exactly what we would expect if things are working. So, a bit of that is working, but that was actually the trivial part that is working now. Um, maybe, maybe we should right now start to implement the formatting of this error message so we have more fun improving the, later improving the context. Improving the context reporting. So maybe we should do that right now. Yeah, let's let's do it. Question is, where do we put it? Um, we already have something like data stream print position and context. We probably need something like data stream format context. I don't know if we even need the stream itself for that. I mean, maybe we, 
maybe we do. Uh, probably like below, we will use some kind of printf style function callback. For now. And this will get, uh, should it get the, yeah, it will get the, the query. Data stream context query. So the first thing we will do is we will iterate over the context and find out the, the widths of all the table columns that we need. Oh, actually, we should probably We should probably have a counter for the used for the used context entries, and I, I'm thinking maybe we should use a little array template for that because it does exactly that that it has this allocated count and the used count. That would just mean we have array thirty two. of actually of info this literally has exactly that the pointer and used and then allocated why not reuse that I think we don't have the memory namespace used here, so maybe we do, do it ugly like that, or maybe we just start using and we probably should actually qualify them fully from the start. And we don't need those anymore. So, yeah, that just needs a little bit of a rewrite. So this is infos.array and then we have uh, query infos.unused equals dev plus one. I mean, it's a bit redundant with what we report here, but at least we have it stored then in the query itself. I think it's cleaner to have it in the query. even though that's a bit of a redundancy right now that we have here. 
So infos and used. So now this is um, this is simple. <coughs> Okay, and now we just, I mean, we need some, some column widths. We will need a width for the title. Uh, we will need a width for the start offset. Let's look at to do. So the width of the title will be Probably, and probably we will not allow this to overlap like this, even though we could in this case. We could allow it to overlap here. But that's a bit difficult because we also need to align this stuff. So table width would be until here. So that would be the first width that we have. Then so these numbers then we need something to guarantee that we have here at least these two so I guess I guess we will align up to here because those will be right aligned. And those will be right aligned. And those will probably be left aligned. Yeah, I think we can handle all of this all of this in one in one column. Then we will probably have some fixed width stuff okay what about the end what do we need to align here If the two end at the same, I'm not sure we need to align anything back here because if the two end at exactly the same byte, then also these ones will be the same. So they will align automatically. If they are not the same, so the the outer one most the out, more outer. The outer context, uh, the one that is farther out, will be to the left here anyway. Yeah, I'm not sure if this will need, but this we will see in detail later if this will need some kind of alignment. So the most important ones for now are the title width and the width of the starting offset. And then uh, let's make a little helper that tells us um, the width of a decimal decimal integer
I guess that's right. So the width of the start offset is the integer width of info. Oh God, why is my typing so bad today? Um, the width of Let's call it the start delta. That is the difference to the current position. Okay, so hmm. okay. I think we need more. We need more. information. The problem is the current location. There can be there can be different numerical values for the current location because there might be streams in the middle that define a new address space like a compressed stream. And so the current the current position can be different. That's a bit annoying. Let's just let's build it in for now and maybe we can simplify it out later. So we will have a a current offset. Okay, we also have unknown this we should deal with so here the current offset is very easy that's just point and minus buff Uh, here the current offset is uh, data stream pos or position, I guess. Yeah. So let's uh, let's current current offset no um, current offset <clears throat> then we will calculate the the delta between the two. It's just we need to take care about the unknown. So that's actually signed. So they are actually Decimal unsigned integer 
or unknown width. Should we, actually that's more, right, that's seven, yeah. Should we just use a question mark? Maybe. So here we also need to consider the, so if, if both are known, then the delta is the current offset minus the start offset. Otherwise, we also set this to minus one, which it, so this will otherwise always be non-negative. So now we have the widths. Uh, The width of the title is simply the string length of, of a string collector get query strings info title header. So the, the width of the complete starting, the width of the complete starting thing. Okay, actually we also will need an indentation. The indentation will be increased. Yeah. So we have the indentation plus one plus, so let's comment here. The one is for, for this one. Then we have the starting offset. Starting offset then at least two two characters, then we will have the delta width. Okay, that's it, I think. Then we will just do the loop again. Maybe it will be easier to reuse this loop and recalculate most of the stuff. And also recalculate the indentation. Probably that will be easier.
So we do the two passes. And here we decide if pass, if we are in the first pass, we do that. Otherwise, we already know the maximum width of everything and we do the actual formatting. And here we will actually do the indentation. So if it will be a bit complicated, but basically what we will do is uh, we will we will remember. the start offset of the previous of the previous stream just need to be careful about the streams that do the that define a new address space here but basically um, if if the start offset is unknown or the start offset is not equal to previous start offset, then we will increase our indentation. So let's start a bit with the printing. So first, first we will print the title. Uh, the title will be left aligned. Let's see if this works that we specify the format like this. Or should we, I don't know, maybe we should pass a negative value to the Let's see how is this how is this uh, usually done. How is this specified? If we specify the no, it's not equivalent, but it's an issue integer. So. Question is, do negative length work in this? Yeah, we will, we will see. So that's the title. Then a space. Some indentation. the opening thing a number oh but not the d this will be uh, this is a, can be a 64 bits a space A 
uh, then we need uh, the, the equals and we need a, a varying number of them. So like this. Then the start offset. Uh, actually, the problem is here we can also have here we can also have the question mark. So we will need some some buffers. Let's see, can we do something like this, like um, or int two max? <laughs> I have no idea if this this could work. I probably can do it even like that. Because it doesn't hurt to pass the argument when it's not used. Okay, and then we will we'll also need a buffer for that's always so annoying to print a certain to repeat a certain character a certain number of times. That's so annoying. But we can, I mean, we could use n, we could use n to get a, that's an interest, no, yeah, but this only works if we write to a buffer that we have, because then we could just do it with alignment, uh, space things out, and then fill in the, the filling character afterwards. That would be nice. The problem is that you cannot specify a filling character. Yeah, whatever. We just have to use what we what we got. So let's let's start. What what do we have? We have um, the max width of the title. Why is this messed up here? 
max width of the title and the title itself. Actually, we can we can query it once. We can query it once here. So then we do the indent and print empty string. And then we have start offset buffer. Okay, that would be, we will solve this problem later. Then we have the start delta buffer. And then we have um, the current offset buffer, which we still need to create. Now let's let's take this one. And let's here, uh, let's print an add. Oh, I already have this current with current offset. I already have that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So just two more, so we have an end delta and an end offset. Yeah, let's just let's just try this out. Format context. Let's run our tags. See if this worked. Yes, this worked nicely. Um, we want to have the con uh, format connection run. We will just use fprintf to standard out of the query. Uh, 
uh, we will need this one a prototype we will need here somewhere blah blah, blah here Okay, I mean the title string comes from a string collector, so it's for sure less than two gigabytes, so we don't have a problem here. Okay, the stringification, ah, uh, oh, probably that works only inside a macro, right? So, Could that work? Stupid, stupid compiler. Why is that not? Why is that not a con? You don't know that string length can be a constant. Okay. So let's let's not try to be too smart about that because that. I think it is. What is it? Nineteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, nineteen. Nineteen characters. Plus the terminating zero. Oh, why? That's what I wanted. Oh, I forgot. <clears throat> I forgot the buffer sizes. So let's make a macro here. I don't know why it's waiting. So I have some huge file open, it seems. And delta. Oh, I did not, I did not calculate this.
Uh, okay, this must of course go the other way around. Hand offset minus current offset. Why does this suddenly fail? Ah, because we changed that to, yeah, we changed that. So actually I should, yeah, I should create an init function for that. Because this you can easily forget to set the m use to zero. Maybe it's just good enough if we have an init function for the array actually. <clears throat> yeah, that's, that probably just needs a cast. So we get some something resembling something, but only to some degree. So the indent is fine. The rest is not so fine. But we I mean, it's it's no wonder because we do not really. So the, the alignment of the title, that was okay. But I think we want to have that left aligned. Let's see if that works. Title string, yeah. Uh, then the indent, this is, this is working. Uh, start offset, yeah, this is also fine. What is missing is the alignment. So there's one space too much. Well, the alignment of this is missing currently. So here we would have a um, max with start. But from this we must subtract some things because what we what we used ourselves so actually i think we will not we will not add these constants here because we just have to to subtract subtract them again ourselves so that's no use indent start offset start delta 
so we just we must subtract those for the current line and let's first just repeat so fill out an empty string just to see whether basically the alignment is working not really oh the indent we we must also subtract the indent Yeah, now we are aligned up to the current position. But I think actually we will want to do it the other way. Uh, we probably want to do it the other way. So to actually add the spaces here. So we have to start offset and then let's add the spaces. Then the delta. So do we have some, yeah, that's starting to look like something. Uh, we also want to do the outdentation, I think, at the end. I just need to think about how to actually do that. We probably need to calculate also because it depends on the width, depends on the width of these um, end deltas here.
So we probably need to calculate the end width also. Questions, where do we, where do we add these? Probably here. Okay, yeah, I know what I did wrong, that, that's what I did wrong. I'm really looking forward to getting a decent external keyboard here. Why is still wrong? Why is still wrong? Oh, because I inserted it at the wrong place. That's why. Yes, yes, yes. Except for the filling of the arrows, this is starting to look nice. So let's fill the arrows. We will need a stupid helper for that, I guess. So, um, That's a bit of an artifact of our callback interface here that we need something like that. Uh, 
And let's first make a really small buffer to stress things. Let's make this a to make this a bit more readable. So now we know that count is smaller than n, so it's definitely smaller than smaller than the buffer size minus one. That should be it. So where, we do, where do we need to break? We want one of the errors we want here. And the other extension we want here. So
that's a bit stupid this code but but it works it works there's just so many cases that we should should be testing and we don't have the most important thing yet is that um, the streams that the streams that uh, create their own address space should have a separate line also the detail strings are th still missing so there's still a lot to do but um, it's starting to look like what we want to have so I think I can put some of these things on a line the details I think the details we will just print after Or description I, I call it I think Question is, should we always put the description in something like braces or? Not. Oh, the new line we messed up, the new line. Okay, we have a description for one of our strings. I mean the the biggest the biggest open problem for me is is actually where do we get the stream this stream titles and descriptions from this is not a big problem for example if your if your stream is a complete pdf file because working on a complete pdf file will take some non-trivial amount of time and so it it is ir irrelevant if you prepare a title and description for the stream and set it once for the stream the question is, as I said, if we have some inner loops that create tiny substreams. I mean, I don't think we want to have that or will have that. But then we really have the, the question of where and when to create the description for these substreams because they, they will be used only in debugging or error reporting. So we shouldn't really spend time on time and memory on creating these descriptions if they are not needed.
And actually my idea was that it should work in the following way that actually, actually if If this is a stream that <clears throat> creates its own uh, creates its own address space, then we would actually reset the reset the indentation. We would, um, if this is the second pass, we would actually print something. Namely, um, probably the, just the, the description of the string, uh, of the stream. And we wouldn't, we wouldn't, we would not append the description here. So So this will now look a bit different. Yeah, in memory stream of 20 bytes. Okay, it doesn't look very different. We currently don't have a substream that defines again its own address space. So we would have to uh, test something like an in inflate stream of compressed data. Yeah, but this is certainly approaching. So we should we should probably capitalize the in memory stream. But this is approaching something that looks like I, what I imagined. The formatting is maybe a bit too baroque. I'm not sure, but it's it's nice information, I think. Let's see what happens, for example, if we let this substream extend to the very end of the stream. So if we replace this by 15, if it will align correctly. No does not align correctly. Why that? Probably, ah, I think I, for, I know what I forgot. I probably don't set the pre, yeah, I don't set the previous end offset. That's the problem. You really need to test everything.
Yeah, now it aligns correctly. Let's try the same with the start. So let's reset that back to 10. And let's put the start at zero for now. Zero plus 10. Okay, looks fine. Zero, 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 zero. A bit redundant, but yeah. I'm considering that maybe for a zero delta, we could do a special printing that just says equals. I'm not sure how often this case will actually occur. But yeah, I mean, that is all working fine. So I think I'll probably take a break for lunch. And I really need to think about where the descriptions should be coming from. That's the biggest open question. The rest is mostly little formatting details and so on. One thing I still want to try is if we um, if we use larger numbers how it looks like if we use larger numbers. So let's start this as an at an offset of of a hundred. And then let's actually seek yeah now it will actually already become interesting. Let's see. Uh, we seek we seek this seeking substream. Yeah, this will become interesting. I should check the current offset here. Yeah, now it's already getting interesting because we have different positions here. Which is actually, this is not a problem of our formatting code or, or query code. That is actually the case in the stream system. But I mean the alignment works. It's just that this is a case that I'm not really sure how to deal with that. Should we also visually indicate the difference here? I'm not sure. Because that's actually a thing that the the stream pos positions can be out of sync like that, and they are resynced whenever we do a, a, an access that goes down the chain of, of surrounding substreams.
But anyway, at least uh, I mean the formatting works works as expected. Just a question, should we do anything about these out of sync positions or is it just the best anyway to report them just like they are in the system? Because that might also help in tracking down errors. Yeah. Those are the little things that come up. Okay. Um, so thanks for watching if anybody is here and um, see you probably later today. Bye.